Barnabas Collins on Dark Shadows in 1967 was almost a gothic romance story. When Barnabas thinks Maggie is the lover from far, far in the past because Barnabas is a vampire, he thinks Maggie looks a lot like Josette Collins, his lover from the past. And I guess calling this storyline a gothic romance might be over the top because there's not a whole lot of romance about it. When Barnabas is doing a lot of brainwashing and torturing of Maggie to try and make her believe that she is really Josette Collins. I didn't hear you come in. Is it too late to get a cup of coffee? I was just closing. Oh, then I won't trouble you. Uh, do you know where I can get a cup of coffee? The only place I can think of is closed by now. <laughs> it's one of the charms of Collinsport. We roll up the sidewalks when the sun goes down. Yes, Collinsport can be lonely at times. But then it's not unique in that respect. Nighttime in itself can be lonely. I do appreciate this. I am rather weary. Perhaps the coffee will revive me. Oh. Well, this coffee is going to be strong. I'll guarantee you that. Hey, would you like something with it? No, just the coffee. Well, do you have family here? I have relatives. Well, who are they? I probably know them. I am related to the Collinses. The Collins family? Yes. Then you're a Collins. Yes, my name is Collins. Barnabas Collins. What an unusual cane. Oh, it's a family heirloom. Well, I've never seen one like that before. There isn't another one like it in the world. Is that silver? Gold and silver and very, very old. It must be very valuable. Oh, it is. But its main value to me is sentimental. In fact, it's my prized possession. I would rather part with anything in the world before I would part with this cane. Listen to those dogs howling. They were doing that last night, too. Were they? And before we go too deep into this gothic story, we have to touch upon the relationship between Barnabas and Willie Loomis. Willie Loomis started on Dark Shadows as this almost delinquent thug who would push people around to get what he wants. But now since he is the one that found Barnabas in the coffin, Barnabas has him under mind control. Almost like Willie is a Lo Willie Loomis is a victim of Barnabas's torture as well. Willie is definitely a tortured soul now that Barnabas is in his life. There you are. I've waited up the entire night for you. Leave me alone. Come on, let's get going. Please, I'm sick. I can't go. Look at me. I said, look at me. I've got to know that you're not lying to me again. I'm not lying to you. I'm sick. Honest. Uh, Barnabas is controlling Willie, kind of making him rebuild the old house to how it was in old times when he lived here hundreds of years ago. And this kind of leads to Barnabas having a bit of an obsession with Maggie. Oh. Miss Evans, again I startled you, and again I apologize. Well, I didn't hear you come in. To what do I owe the honor of this visit? Your cane. You left it behind in the coffee shop. Maggie? What? You look strange. What's what's wrong? I'm not sure. Maggie, look at me. What's the matter? Have, have you ever had that sensation of being stared at? Like somebody was staring at you and you couldn't see them? Why? Because I just had that feeling now. 
somebody was looking at me. Looking right through me. Barnabas starts visiting Maggie at night, sucking blood from her neck. feel well? I don't know. I, I just don't seem to have much energy. Mm -hmm. I feel so cold. Cold. Ah. <laughs> Look, you left these open all night. I wouldn't want you to think that the service is that bad. Well, I'm used to good service. I'm a big tipper. Oh, oh Joe. I'm sorry. Tell it to the cup, it's in pretty bad shape. So at least I'll get to see how you handle a broom now. I'll sweep it up later. Are you gonna leave the pieces right there? I said I'll get it later! Suddenly, Maggie starts to have similar symptoms that Willie had. Weak, blood loss, the doctor, Dr. Woodard, can't figure it out what's been going on in town. Your father is doing a magnificent portrait. Looks quite nice. It's very much you. Mr. Evans, I hope you don't find the short notice I gave you. Oh, not at all. I'd soon push on as quickly as possible. Good. And Miss Evans, would you like to sit down? Well, uh, she can't stay. She uh, hasn't been feeling well all day. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, nothing serious, I hope. Nothing serious. And if I say she's lost blood, then somehow she's lost it. Her blood supply is very low, and I'd like to know why. Well, uh, did, she, did she give you any idea how it happened? No, she couldn't explain. Or wouldn't. She wasn't very cooperative. What kind of a girl are you raising, Sam? She knew I was there to help her. Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry. Uh, she's uh, exceedingly uh, edgy today. Mm. And she's usually not like that. Now, uh, what are you going to do? Well, I've taken some blood tests, and I'll, I'll run tests on them, uh -huh. see what the corpuscles are up to, see if there's any kind of a cell breakdown, a few things like that. Does she have a history of blood deficiency? Oh, no. no. And Maggie has this terrible dream where she finds herself laying in a coffin and in later talks with her father as her sickness gets worse. She talks about how she's going to die. Um, Joe and Sam don't know what she's talking about. Victoria is staying with Maggie to kind of protect her from whatever makes her want to leave at night. No one can figure out what's going on. And this is where the dogs hollering come in again, like really hollering and barking. And the dogs get close to the door and Victoria leaves the room for a second. And when she comes back, she can't get in the room and Maggie's gone. There's no reason for you to be here. I promised your father. It's an absurd promise. What's that sound? What sound? Why don't you leave? Maggie, I can't leave you. You know that I can't. Well, those dogs, they're, they're getting closer. If you're so frightened, why don't oh, Maggie, you... look! Go away! Go away! 
Why don't you leave? Oh, Maggie, there's something trying to get in. Go away! Oh, Maggie, I've got to get help. are fresh again and this is after this is when she is rushed to the hospital and the nurse checks her pulse and it seems like she is dead but when the nurse comes back Maggie's body is gone and the window is open and we don't know where she is I don't, I don't understand she was she was there just a a minute ago. The window, it, it was only open a crack. You said no heartbeat and no breathing. There was every indication that she was dead. <laughs> the main thing is, why did Barnabas turn Maggie into a vampire and try to control her well, we get the story that Barnabas tells Victoria and Carolyn about a woman. That woman turns out to be Josette Collins, how back in the day she was afraid of her lover turning her into a monster, ran out to the cliff, fell to her death. The shouts of her lover were lost in the wind as he moved swiftly after her. Near the top, she stumbled over a large rock Crying hysterically, she limped and crawled to the edge of the precipice. Her lover reached her, clutched at her, spinning her around to face him. Her eyes were wide with terror as the lover held her tightly, his lips pressed against her throat. Soon she grew limp, and he released her, suddenly with a, a last surge of energy, she broke free and hurled herself off the cliff. Her scream, reacting and echoing as she plunged downward. Her body was impaled in the large, craggy rocks below. Her lover descended to the bottom of Widow's Hill and found her body. And I think that was a story about Barnabas and Josette and how Josette did not want to be turned into a vampire and that kind of led to her ultimate death. So now we get this uh, creepy romance between or that Barnabas is trying to make happen. See, it's just as you left it, as we left it long, long ago. Nothing has changed. Even we haven't changed. Barnabas has mind controlled, I guess, Maggie into making her think she is Josette Collins and that she is now to believe she has always been Josette Collins. And someday soon you shall become my bride. Bride? As it was always intended to be. What are those tears? Oh, please, no tears. There mustn't be any tears ever. Listen to it. And the past will fade away to nothing. nothing. Not even a memory. Listen. And you will forget what you have been and yearn for only what you are now. Listen. And all fears, all loneliness, all unhappiness will disappear forever. Listen. 
Iblis In some aspects Barnabas is wanting Maggie to be Josette so bad harkens back to Barnabas, even though he's a vampire, there has to be some failings deep within him if he once loved someone, even though the relationship between himself and Josette didn't seem to end very well. I would say that Barnabas was still in love with her, and still now all these many, many, many years later has this wishful thinking that Maggie is like, maybe Josette in a different body. Now, now there's a similarity from Maggie to jo Josette, according to Barnabas, and that's why he, he sees that. But one could think this is like souls connecting once again, or like reincarnation might be how Barnabas feels about Maggie in hopes that she can be Josette for him. Is there any word of your daughter? No, none. Seems to have vanished into thin air. Sam? Yeah. Yeah, Joe. You want me to take the easel too? No, no, I think it's better if we uh, leave the easel here to keep the painting on it. Okay, right, whatever you say. I... Oh, what is it? What's the matter? I heard voices. Well, you know what room it is. It's your room. My room? Well, sure, of course. No, it isn't. What are you talking about? I've never been here before. Why did you try to get out of here? I didn't. I heard something fall. I heard you scream. Oh. You were trying to escape from here, weren't you? You tried to leave me, didn't you? No, I didn't. I know when you're lying, Josette. You mustn't lie to me. You mustn't leave me. You're never going to leave me. No. Never. No, I... No one is to see you. Do you understand that? No one is to see me. No one is to see me. If anyone comes to the house, you're to stay up here. Stay here. Why can't they see me? They wouldn't understand that you are Josette. But I think this, uh, it's a fascinating story. The supernatural, the horror element really coming out in this relationship between Barnabas and uh, Maggie, with Maggie thinking she's Josette. They might call you by that other name. What other name? They might call you Maggie Evans. 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 Your name is Josette. Josette Collins. My name is Josette Collins. I'm Josette Collins. You have always been Josette Collins, no matter what anyone says. With the Maggie side of the story, it's a tough watch watching Maggie, this character that has been on the show for quite a while now, kind of being mentally tortured by Barnabas. One could ask, why isn't Barnabas just straight up turning her into a vampire? And I think from Barnabas's point of view, he's hoping that Maggie would become Josette for him before fully turning her into a vampire. Because if he just fully turns her into a vampire, they're kind of at even power. And I think that would not go good for Barnabas and he knows that. So that's why there is this long drawn out process. Also, it's a soap opera. So of course it's gonna be a long drawn out storyline. Huh? Why don't you take the painting home with you and finish it there? I wanna do that all along. I'll be uh, back in a minute for the easel. Hey, wait, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll carry the easel out for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no sense making two trips, huh?
Maggie was starting to remember that she is Maggie. Her name is Maggie. Her name is not Josette. But there comes a point where Sam is visiting the old house and drops his pipe and Maggie finds it. You're not supposed to come down here unless you're told to. I wanted to come down. Well, you better remember to do what you're told. Am I Josette? Yeah, you're Josette. Now please remember it, huh? I keep thinking that I'm someone else. Someone else. Now, you're Josette Collins and this is your house. Do you understand? I know. I know what it is. It belongs to someone. Someone I've got to find. I've got to take it to someone. I've got to take it there. Josie! Where are you? What's wrong? Not up there. The door! She must have went out! That door's supposed to be locked. We must find her immediately. And Maggie finds herself back at her house with her father, Sam. Sam sees her outside the door, but of course when he goes out, he can't find her. She had ran off and... Maggie! Maggie's outside the window, what standing is... outside there. Maggie! Where are you? Maggie! I, I don't see her anywhere. No, she was standing right there, I'm telling you. She was standing right there. Barnabas finds her. She can't escape Barnabas's grip. <laughs> Barnabas is definitely quite the villain during this storyline. It is kind of hard to, I would say, root for him, obviously. I think he is meant to be the villain. He is a vampire, and they want to depict him as the monster that a vampire should be depicted as. To me, during the storyline, Barnabas is quite unlikable, and I would have to think that was the point of the story. It's hard to root for somebody that's really causing all this mental grief to Maggie, in my opinion. I know that Barnabas becomes quite this popular character, but at this point in the show, I would have to say he's not quite, we're not quite seeing the more humane side of Barnabas Collins, to say the least. If you tried to leave me, you must be punished, Josette. I dislike having to punish you. But you must come. No! Please. You must learn to never leave me. You must stay with me always. Yes. <laughs> always. You must never go. Just like long ago when you tried to leave me. You must never leave me again. I want... What do you want? I want to be with you. You should have remembered that tonight. You will remember that after tonight. What is that? Give it to me. No, 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 I tried to save you. I tried to appeal to you. But now I must punish you. You must learn your lesson.
Maggie? What did you say? I was calling Maggie. That sounds like a servant's name. But I don't remember one named Maggie. Forgive me. I forgot. She was here for a while, but now she's gone. Forever. Who was she? No one of any importance. Her name will never be mentioned again. Slowly but surely, Willie is trying to help Maggie out. I think Willie is having a hard time seeing what is being done to Maggie as well. Well, I have great powers over her now, just as I have over you. But they're not absolute. Otherwise, she would never have tried to leave me. Yeah, but you've always had power over her, her and me. That's um, true. And Willie's been trying to be a good friend to Maggie, but Willie is kind of weak and meek, especially when it comes to Barnabas. You'll have to kill me first. I might do just that, but unfortunately, I do not need you anymore. Oh no, you can't do without me. You'll have no one to take care of you. No one will guard you during the day. I'll find someone else. Yeah, but that'll take time. And they might find you here. They might come looking for you, and there'll be no one to protect you without me. I'm willing to take that chance. You don't mean that. Don't I, Willie? You still want her for your bride. Look how, look how beautiful she is. I don't want to look at her. Oh, look at her. And you still want her. And you still can have her. Look at her, Barnabas. Look how beautiful she is. Look! Come with me. What are you going to do to her? I'm taking her with me. You stay here until I return. No! Oh. No! 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 stay until I come for you. No. By then I will have made my final decision. Oh, please. Please come back. Please come back. Maggie's being held by Barnabas. She's not doing what Barnabas wants her to do and becoming Josette Collins and being brainwashed into Josette Collins and listening to the music box that Barnabas uses to try and do the mind control or the brainwashing. So Barnabas locks her in a cell down in the basement of the old house. This will be your home until I decide otherwise. Oh, please, oh, please don't leave me here. I couldn't stand it. I go out of my mind. I go mad. Perhaps you'll come to find that madness is preferable to sanity no. or death preferable to life. No. 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 Please, please don't leave me here. Good night, Josette. Oh. 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 oh, please, please, don't leave me here. I'll lose my mind in here. Please! Please! Willie! Yes, me. Oh! Willie, you don't know how good it is to see you after being in here alone. He wants me to take you upstairs. Upstairs? To your room. I mean, Josette's room. Now, it could mean he's going to give you another chance. Do you think so? You go along with him. You pretend to be what he wants you to be for your own sake. I'll try. You gotta do more than try. You gotta make him think you are, Josette, and you're gonna be his bride. Oh, really? Do you know what that means, to be like he is? Just exist among the living dead? I don't say that. It's How are you, my dear? Better. 
better than I've been in days. Are you happy to return to your room? It's like a paradise. Perhaps you will appreciate it a little more than you did. I do. Yes, I do. Would you like to stay here again? May I? Well, you must be certain that you're sincere. I am. Believe me, I am. Perhaps. I had Willie cut some fresh flowers for you. Do you like them? Oh, the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen. Josette had a vase of flowers in every room in the house. She wanted life. The beauty of living to surround her wherever she went. Allow the music to become a part of you. You seem calmer when you listen to the music. Yes. Does it really have that effect on you? I... I feel... How do you feel? Why, I feel happy. Why? I don't know why. I'm not sure. Is it because you're here in this room? Yes. Is it because you're with me? Yes. Have you longed to be with me? Yes, with all my heart. Look at me. Look into my eyes. Deep into my eyes. Tell me how happy you are. Happy. Because we're together? Yes. Maggie gets to be a, a classic soap character here when she is trying to play um, the villain for a fool. She eventually tries to pretend that she is Josette in hopes to stake Barnabas and kill him. But that backfires and it gets further torture for Maggie. in the, sh the cell there's this young girl singing and she sees this young girl and that young girl's name is Sarah and it seems we've all been alluded to this over the last couple of months that this young girl is probably the ghost of Barnabas's younger sister that died I want someone to play with well don't you have any friends I used to but I can't find them I didn't see anyone. Do you live around here? Yes. I've never seen you before. What's your name? Sarah. My name's David. I know. It is Sarah that helps Maggie escape from Barnabas from a, with a secret underground passage. I'm not just imagining you. Little girl, I don't know who you are or why you're here. But you must help me. You've got to tell someone that I'm locked in here so they can come and get me. You must tell my father. I know a riddle. A riddle? It tells the way to get out of here. Well, what is it? One, two, away they flew. Three, four, by the door. Five, six, count the brick. Seven, eight, the clue is great. Nine, ten, home again. Three, four, near the door. Near the door. Five, six, count the bricks. Bricks. Count the bricks. There must be something behind the bricks. Which way? Five, six, count six bricks down. 
down? Down from the grating? And she also go appears to Sam and tells Sam to try and find or look for Maggie at the beach. Sam finds Maggie at the beach after she escapes, even though Barnabas did find her first at the beach because she can never escape Barnabas. But Sam arrives and Barnabas has to run off, so he's not seen there with Maggie. Who's down there? <laughs> You're not. No. No, you're breathing. Oh. Oh, Maggie. Maggie, you're alive. Dr. Woodard is, hopes to help Maggie by sending her to Dr. Hoffman at the sanitarium, and they want to pretend that she's dead. So, in order to protect Maggie, they fake her death. Well, at the moment, I'm more concerned about Maggie's safety than her mental state. Safety? Well, sure, Sam. Face the facts. Whoever it was that kidnapped him may try again, and he might be successful. Well, we won't give him a chance. We'll put a guard on the thing 24 shh, hours a day. Shh, she quiet, will... quiet. I've got a much better idea than that. What is it? I think we should let it be known that Maggie is dead. Dead? I think I can arrange it so that, well, so that everyone will believe it. The proper records and the death certificate they'll all be signed so that well it'll it look legitimate sam her father joe her boyfriend know that maggie is alive they are trying to keep her safe from the terror that has been happening to her and thus the gothic romance seems to have died for barnabas because he thinks maggie is dead but really this chapter in Dark Shadows closes with Maggie still alive, but having to hide from the terror that is Barnabas.